All right, guys, now in a recent video, we tested the AMD Ryzen 8600G. It is an APU, so we didn't actually have a discrete graphics card there, and it did exceptionally well. There was one game, though, in our test suite that it didn't perform that well on. We had to pretty much lower everything and even the resolution down to 720p just to get it playable. And even then, we only roughly got about a 30 FPS experience. The 1% lows were much lower than that, so it probably wasn't playable to most people's standards. But since doing that video, there's actually been an update to the game. So now it actually includes AMD's FSR 3 with frame generation. Now frame generation will work on an 8600G. So I thought today we'd take a look at it and see if we can actually get that game playable without a discrete graphics card on one of these. So we got the game started and of course it loads perfectly fine it did in our previous testing although we had to lower everything down even down to the resolution running it in 720p just to even get the game kind of playable but today we're going to be testing it in 1080p if we just jump over to the game right now we'll pop over to the settings we'll have a look at what we are actually configured to so we are currently configured to a 1080p resolution we've set the graphics preset down to low and to begin with we're not actually going to enable any kind of upscaling we're going to see what kind of uh, quality we get without actually doing any of that so let's just jump straight into the game now while the game loads up for today's testing we are running two sets of overlays here we've got the amd radeon in the right hand side corner and we've also got the msi afterburner in the left hand side that is because generally you do tend to see a slight difference between these particularly when enabling and disabling things like fsr3 and frame gen but having both up at the same time will give us a good indication of whether it's actually working or not but if we now jump into the game we can see that we're currently getting an average of around 27 frames per second it is dropping the further we walk into the game and the more that's going on the screen it's now getting around 25 frames per second with a 1% low of 19 and to be honest it's not a great experience just moving the character around we can see that it's missing a lot of frames here and our frame time is going crazy the first thing we'll do though I think is actually jump back into the settings and what we'll do is we'll just enable FSR 3 on its own I have no idea what this is actually going to do we'll just scroll down to here we'll turn the upscaling on to FSR 3 we're going to leave frame generation off for now now I have seen that there are some kind of issues with frame generation particularly when you're using something like an APU like this sometimes the game does crash but if it does that we'll restart it back up again and it should take that kind of effect as we go forward but let's just jump back into the game now with FSR 3 enabled we can see that in actual fact it's made our kind of performance worse nearly it's well it's kind of around the same really so enabling FSR 3 on its own hasn't actually done anything at all our Radeon overlay in the corner is currently getting an average of around 22 frames per second with the MSI one getting a very similar result of 23 to 24 so they're pretty much in line and everything is reasonably accurate we also have a frame time currently of around 40 which is shown on both so that's not too bad now it isn't actually the fps or the average fps in this game which is really causing us issues here it is those one percent lows we have a one percent low at the moment of 19 which is why we're getting a lot of stuttering and just things are not smooth at all some people would actually say this is quite playable but for many people it just isn't and this is actually on a reasonably easy part of the game to play so of course we want to be able to do something about it now jumping back into the settings here we're going to enable fsr3 and we're going to hope that it actually doesn't crash when we do this we just go down there and we'll turn fsr3 on with frame generation we'll go back again and see if it crashes actually it seems to be working and there we go so the game has actually crashed now the game has actually crashed out we can't really do a lot about it, it just goes straight back to windows but what we'll do is we'll start the game up again and we'll give it another go Okay, so we're now back in the game and unfortunately these are some of the quirks that you're gonna have to go through with new technologies like this the game did actually crash three or four times and we had to keep restarting it and then kind of enable things in a certain way one thing that i have found is if you actually enable fsr3 then go play the game go back to the settings and then enable frame generation it tends to crash if you actually reset all of that get the game running then go to the settings enable fsr3 and frame generation at the same time and go back to the game it tends to work more often than not but we are back into the game now and frame generation is actually turned on actually we'll just go to the settings and we'll show you what's actually configured we go to the display we're still in 1080p we're still in a low preset we've got fsr3 turned on and we've got frame generation turned on we're heading back into the game now we can see that our fps has increased by quite a bit and more importantly that one percent low has increased as well we're now currently getting an average of around 42 frames per second with a one percent low of 33 again it's not amazing performance here but we are using a basic apu there is no discrete graphics card in this system 
a lot of people would say 30 fps is a playable experience particularly if they come from consoles and of course that's exactly what we're getting here we're getting a 30 fps experience with the averages being slightly above that the averages now are running around 40 fps and the game is a lot smoother it's not perfect like i say but it is much more smoother to play than it was before and we've nearly kind of doubled our performance here particularly when it comes to the averages although the one percent lows here have only gone up by about 30 percent but that is enough to get a game reasonably smooth here we'll have a little bit more of a wander around we'll see what we can kind of cap that out at the further we go into areas where there's less people it does seem to increase by quite a bit we're currently getting an average of 40 still or 39 here but if we kind of wander around a little bit we can see that the continuous is actually going up to around 50 fps of course you can't avoid all of these people when playing a game like this so it's not like you're going to get that performance all the time but at least the game is actually quite playable now and we are getting a reasonable console like experience so for anybody actually building a miniature pc games console with an apu like this you can actually get away with playing a game like this particularly if you are running something like fsl3 with frame generation now i think that's absolutely amazing that um, technology just like this can actually boost our performance so much like this i have actually tried this game as well with frame generation on a radeon rx 6600 you will see that in an upcoming video soon and to be honest the results are mind-blowing it completely transforms discrete graphics cards like that in from one tier completely to another and it's really nice to know that you can also get away with it on the apus let me know in the comments below what you think of the performance of fsr3 with frame generation even from the picture quality i can't really tell much of a difference apart from the fact that it's not as laggy and stuttery anymore but we are set in a very low preset so maybe you can't see it unless you're in something like high we will test that with something that's a bit bigger than this going forward so we can really get a good visualization of how FSR3 and particularly frame generation behave when it comes to quality. But apart from that, I'm actually reasonably happy with what it's doing here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. And if you want to see what we do with FSR3 and frame generation going forward. And I'm sure as always, we'll catch you guys in the next one.